Okay, so we have these expressions for our um, fields. So if 5p is like a harmonic oscillator with frequency omega p, then we, and, uh, you know, we're dealing with an operator here, then we're saying that we can define these new operators, raising and lowering operators, just like we did in ordinary quantum mechanics. And then what we'll do is we'll just take that expression and we'll plug it into, you know, we'll have an expression for 5x that looks like this. And we can just plug uh, that expression for phi of p in right here. So uh, this has, you know, t in it, but since we've gone back to our quantum, uh, quantum mechanics in the Schrodinger picture, we're just dealing with our spatial um, spatial coordinates. And if we do that, we will get something that looks like this. And I've labeled this phi g for phi guess, as in, based on everything we've done, you would kind of guess that this would be what 5x would be. We just plugged in our expression for 5p in this uh, Fourier transform here. And um, basically, it's wrong. Uh, and uh, an easy way to see that it's wrong is that this operator, our field operator, so, you know, we, before x and p were, were both Hermitian operators. They correspond to observables. And so similarly, we want phi of x to be Hermitian. And the problem with that is if we take the Hermitian conjugate of this, we will get a minus sign up here. Um, this term is, you know, Hermitian. But this, this factor here messes things up. So this phi g here is not Hermitian. So it, it can't be the right expression. So I basically, you know, well, I should just say the right answer is this. And I've never really found a good, you know, ex exactly rigorous way to uh, come to this expression other than, I mean, it kind of looks like this expression here, only this is um, manifestly uh, Hermitian. So if we take the Hermitian conjugate, then, you know, these two terms just become each other. So it works out. Um, and uh, yeah, but basically, probably another one of those things where somebody figured out that this was the right answer. And uh, we'll see that it's the correct answer because we'll be able to satisfy all of our commutation relations. So, um, well, first, so pi of x, um, you know, same thing, kind of. Uh, we want something that's Hermitian, so we define something that's kind of like, it's kind of similar. We, we use this expression, uh, but yeah, we, we need it to be Hermitian. So it looks like this. So with that out of the way, so I guess we could, you know, just start from here, just say, okay, we can write our fields in this way. And if we do that, then we would want to know, do they satisfy our commutation relation? So how do we check that? Well, we just, we just got to work it out. So basically, we take the commutator of phi of x and phi of y. And so I'll write that here. Um, so I've just written out phi of x and phi of y here. So phi of x is just this expression. And then pi of y is just this. So I've replaced x with y because it's pi of y. But I've also uh, replaced, so, you know, sorry, sorry, sorry. Um, my momentum here, this p, th these are dummy variables. I'm just integrating with them. So since I have expressions where I'm going to be multiplying these two things, I don't want to reuse summing indices, basically. It's just like in, you know, uh, index notation. I don't want to reuse summing indices. 
So I don't want to reuse my dummy indices here. So I'll use Q for this one instead of um, P. And so, you know, commutator, that's this times this minus this times this. And so we can just write it all out and we'll get this big mess here. So this is 5x times pi of y, and then minus pi of y times 5x. And of course, you know, you might look at this and say, what the fuck am I supposed to do here? <laughs> but it's actually not as bad as it seems. Um, so note that we can pull this, all this mess here, out in front, because, you know, this term just depends on p. So you know, I can I can move this integral and all these terms out to the front. And similarly, in this term, I can move all these out to the front. And uh, so both of these terms have the same, will have the same, you know, term out in front, just this multiplied by this. So I can really combine all this into one term. Um, and I'll just have, you know, that all of this multiplied together times uh, this times this minus this times this. And so you'll foil everything out, you know, but uh, we don't, we can kind of just read off what, what we'll get from this expression. So you can see here the first term in this first term will have an AP and an AQ and an E to the IPX and an E to the IQY. And then in this term, we'll have a minus aq, ap, e to the iqy, e to the ipx. So basically, we have um, you know, e to the ipx times e to the iqy times ap, aq, minus aq, ap. But that's just the commutator of ap and aq times this common factor of e to the i px times e to the iqy, which I've just, you know, written, um, summed in the exponential, sort of, you know. Um, and then, so here I've just factored out everything. So it's just this times this, so I'll get this. And then we'll just have, so we'll just have four terms that involve the commutators of uh, the raising and lowering operators. So, you know, this, the next term we could do is, so we have an AP here, AP dagger, an AQ, and that has an E to the minus IPX, and an E to the IQY. And so similarly down here, we have an AQ, or sorry, an AQ and an AP dagger, and an E to the IQY, E to the minus IPX. So we'll get a, a commutator, uh, AP dagger, AQ, and then just that common factor here. And then we'll have just two more terms that work out just like that. So hopefully you can see that. I don't know how um, I made it. If, if not, you know, you can always just write it out so it's more clear, but um, hopefully it's, uh, you can see that these two things are equivalent. Uh, but, and what's good about this is now we've written everything in terms of commutators of A and A dagger. And we know the commutation relations for those. Um, so if it's an A and an A dagger, then we need, uh, well, then we have this. If it's in two A's, all of the A's will commute. And all of the A daggers commute with each other. So these two terms... This, this term and this term are just zero, because these commutators. And we'll just have uh, a 2 pi, well, and this term will get a negative 2 pi delta p minus q. And this term will get a, a minus 2 pi cubed uh, delta p minus q. So basically, uh, yeah, so we get this. And I've just taken that 2 pi out of both of these terms and canceled with a factor of 2 pi cubed in the bottom here. So I'm left with that. And so I've simplified my expression quite a bit to just this. Uh, but here I'm 
I'm integrating over q and p, and I have this delta function of p minus q. So I can just integrate over q, and that will just, um, so I'll just replace everything in this expression, uh, every q with a p. And if I do that, then I will be left with this. So these will become wp over wp, which is 1. And I will change this q to a p, so I'll have, you know, uh, p y minus, so I'll have one term that looks like e to the i p dot y minus x, and one term that looks i p dot x minus y. And the only thing left to do is notice that, um, so one de or a, a definition of the delta function is this integral. Uh, hopefully you've seen that before. The integral of d3p over 2 pi cubed e to the i p dot y minus x will just be delta y minus x, or delta x minus y. It, it doesn't matter if it's y minus x or x minus y. It's obviously the delta function is symmetric between the two. So basically I'll get two delta of x minus y, and I will cancel this two. I have a minus sign, so that goes away. I'll be left with this i. So I get this, uh, so I get the, the commutation relation is this, which is what we had postulated or maybe demanded before. So that's a sign that we're doing things correctly. And I'll stop here and we will continue later.